All right, hello everybody. So we're here at Mill City Roasters, uh, our roasting campus here in Northeast Minneapolis. And we're so lucky today. We actually have Turge here. He's the world Ebrick champion. And he's actually gonna do a demonstration on how to brew Ebrick, but also some history of Ebrick and a lot of knowledge and information around Turkish coffee. So it's a really nice opportunity for all of us here in Northeast. And uh, Turge has flown up and visited us and this is gonna be an exciting process. So just uh, stay along for the ride here. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. I'm a big fan of Mill City Roasters video series. <laughs> Very knowledgeable. Uh, I appreciate it for that uh, effort. Uh, happy to be here uh, to a demonstration. Oh, wow. It's about exciting. Turkish coffee. Yeah, it's always. Jazz Fabric coffee. Right, right. Yeah, a new name. It's always fun to be with other like coffee nerds, I should say. I mean, uh, I, mean yeah, nerd, yeah. I think yeah. nerd is becoming like, I think it's we've retaken back the term mm -hmm. to where it's actually a, something of like a badge of honor. So maybe we need another term, but maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you. For sure. <laughs> I'm going to talk and demonstrate Turkish coffee today. Uh, it's called Turkish coffee and well known name Turkish coffee, but in the region uh, it has different names. Okay. So similar method, similar, actually same method, different recipes, different names in okay. the region. Because this method has a very long history sure. uh, in that region, which means Arabic Peninsula, Middle East, Turkey, Greece, Balkans, mm -hmm. North of uh, Africa. Sure. They uh, use this method for a long time, hundreds of years. Wow, wow. So uh, actually, I'm gonna uh, say I'm gonna call it Turkish coffee okay. because I'm from Turkey. Sure, sure. But there is you can call whatever you want. Definitely. You can call it Jezve Ibrik or Ibrik <laughs> or Greek coffee or uh, Bosnian coffee, Armenian coffee. But uh, very primitive brewing method. Okay. The oldest coffee brewing method. Really? Yeah. Uh, so coffee discovered in Ethiopia. Sure. We don't know when. Right. Maybe year thousand. Okay. And then. Somehow it moved to Yemen. Yep. Yemen was the uh, biggest uh, producing country, coffee country. Sure. For a long time. Right. And we have some information uh, from year early uh, thousand. Yep. Uh, and more detailed information from early 14th century. Wow. From Sufi dervishes, they were drinking Turkish coffee. Right. 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 This method. Right. 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 Uh, it wasn't Turkish coffee at that time. So okay, uh, right. it was still new. they used to drink uh, a special herbal tea with caffeine content, but okay. there was a drought. This is another story. Wow. There are tons of stories. So <laughs> I'm with you. Somehow I like stories. they got some coffee probably from Kaldi, right. Shepherd Kaldi, <laughs> really? another story. We don't know. <laughs> so they start to drink, they yep. start to brew coffee and its effect. They yes. like the <laughs> buzz effect of coffee because they were praying all night long. I like long. the buzz effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were praying all night long. Right. Coffee helped. Sure. <laughs> so it, it spread it in that region, Yemen region, and then uh, early 15th, 16th century, uh, the coffee shops or coffee houses right, uh, right, right, right. started open in Cairo, Mecca, the first uh, first time. Okay. Men would get together around mosque. The, you know, they right. were not allowed to drink other things. Sure. Uh, and they were, they right. discovered the coffee. The effect. Yeah, the effect and the social effect. Right, 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 right. Yes. And then uh, year 1517, Ottoman Empire invaded Yemen. Okay. And they met coffee and they brought coffee to the palace, to Istanbul. And Sultan and his family, they loved coffee. <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, people start to drink, but they were importing roasted coffee from Yemen. Wow. There was a reason because uh, Ottomans invaded and took control of the trade of coffee. Okay. So they didn't want to uh, lose the advantage. The control. The control. Uh, so they were importing roasted coffee from Yemen with Got ships. It. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, and Year 1554 or 55, the first official coffee houses opened in Istanbul by two Syrian guys, 
Shams and Hakim. Okay. So they were they set up a coffee shop yeah. with counter. Probably they were selling, right. and it became popular. The coffee house culture and it spread it first in Turkey, wow. and in Istanbul. Right. And European travelers met coffee in Istanbul, and they brought to Europe. Sure. In different places, in uh, London, right. the first coffee shop, 1652. Right. Then Vienna. Right. And Italy, also it spread it. And French king and Ottoman sultan, they were good friends. They introduced coffee to France, and France brought coffee to Caribbean island. Interesting. But little uh, earlier Dutchmen, they stole. The coffee seed. plant yeah. seed from <laughs> Yemen and For sure. they planted in Ceylon, uh, Ceylon oh, Island. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, that was another uh, region mm -hmm. became popular. And then from Caribbean island, coffee moved to Brazil. Sure. Uh, early 18th century. Yep. And Brazil became the biggest uh, coffee importer, uh, yeah, producer since uh, then. Mm -hmm. And this method, again, it's a one of the earliest uh, brewing method and cooking uh, method, actually. Right. That's what culinary, I was thinking. Culinary yeah. method. Right, right, right. Definitely. Uh, the technical term, what is uh, Turkish coffee? There's a technical term for okay. this method. It's decoction. Heating or boiling a substance in a liquid. Our substance is coffee Got it. and liquid is water. water. To extract yeah. the compounds from the uh, substance into the water. Right. This is the basic cooking method. Yeah, so for boiling is key to this process. Boiling or heating. Heating, okay, got it. Yeah. So what are the other uh, methods? Right. The general term is percolation. Sure, yep. Because uh, we extract from the substance into the liquid, but we filter. Mm -hmm. the substance mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we can control the extraction right we can stop when uh, right. when we want right right the, the, the water's exposure to the grounds yeah. vice versa the grounds exposure yeah, exactly. to the water we control the it biggest difference is filtration yep uh, this gives uh, advantage and disadvantage sure, uh, definitely. Uh, to turkish coffee mm -hmm. Because we don't filter the coffee right. we brew it we pour into the pot into the cup with coffee grounds, right. so extraction is continuing. Right, 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 right. So, over it can easily over extract. I think that's probably a lot of people's experience. Yes, exactly. And we try to prevent to over extraction for better tasting cup. Right. For right. better uh, result. Mm -hmm. So, uh, be because of that, uh, we need to describe the variables. Okay. of this brew right. method, right, and right. then uh, we can improve, we can control all steps, and we we can control that extraction. Right, I get you, yeah. for sure. So we don't uh, use the filter and the percolation method, a, we use a technique, yes, controlling exactly. the techniques. Yep, exactly. Yep, yep, the steps of the technique. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So for this method, there's a bias. It's bitter, it's dark as hell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, okay, there's yeah, a yeah, cover, yeah. yeah, dark as hell, sweet as uh, love, and <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, there are some reasons, regional reasons, okay, uh, reasons for market demands in the region. They use low quality commercial coffees. Yep, we learned a little bit about that yes. just a bit ago. Uh, from uh, again, Brazil became the big producer sure, sure. from you know every grade of coffee, low grade, high grade, good quality, bad quality coffee. Yep, yep. The price, the market uh, pushed to this region or the Turkish coffee roster to the cheaper, okay, uh, cheaper coffees. greens. Yes, yeah, yeah, cheaper lower quality. Greens. So technically, that type of coffee has some unpleasant uh, flavor yeah. notes, mm -hmm. Definitely. So, but it became a standard for right. the region. Right. People start to expect that uh, As the taste. particular taste. Right. And then, of course, uh, we, without uh, proper equipment and method, it was becoming bitter. To balance that bitterness, they start to add sugar. Or in different regions, they start to add spices. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To cover Spice, it up a little bit, or to add complexity. That, exactly. Right. Exactly. And then uh, we, they, we, be addicted to sugar. 
Right. Yeah, definitely. And now it's easy to drink without uh, right. sugar in that reason. Yeah. Mostly when you order, for example, in Turkey, when you order Turkish coffee, they ask, how do you like it? Uh, plain, without sugar, maybe 20% consumer drink. Really? Plain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The other, medium sugar or sugary. Oh, wow. And there is no standard for Medium sugar or amount. sugary. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of regional. Maybe two spoons, three <laughs> spoons. <laughs> And there are, again, there are two main difficulties, product quality and the method. Product quality is uh, low quality coffee bean. Low quality green. And water. Oh, okay, they water too. They don't know the Definitely. effect of the water to yes. flavor. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other extraction. thing, method, uh, if you Google it, you can find thousands of uh, recipes for JSV break. Okay. Uh, two teaspoon of coffee, measure your water with cup, and stir it constantly, extract, agitate it constantly, boil it three times. Yeah, I've heard that and before. A, yeah, this is the classic uh, yeah. recipe. Three times, throw a little water on it. Yeah, the you, you ruin yeah. the coffee. <laughs> Even the best coffee, <laughs> right. you can ruin with this method. So. Uh, there is no standards for this method because it's very cultural brew method. They say, I learned my gra from my grandmother, this is the best recipe. Right, and it seems like you it's a very complex their, method yeah, too. Their right. mindset. Right, right. Yeah. But uh, it's possible to brew a pleasant, evenly extracted coffee with this method if you follow the standard uh, coffee brew uh, standards. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. You, you, for filtered coffee, we call uh, golden cup standards. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yep. You know, coffee quality, grinding, yep. water ratio, right. heat. extraction, yep. heat uh, method. Mm -hmm. This is all. So I try to apply those information to this all this uh, coffee nice. brew method. Right. So make it a little more scientific. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yes. So I describe. Uh, Extraction, I'm going to talk a lot about extraction refer. Okay. Uh, with extraction to transfer the flavor components from the coffee into the liquid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so for one coffee bean, uh, we can extract 30-35%. Okay. But we, want, we don't want to extract everything. Right. Because right. Uh, after 22-23%, uh, we extract unpleasant compounds. Sure. Uh, chlorogenic acid, phenols, uh, caffeine, mm -hmm, so these mm -hmm. adds uh, extra bitterness sure. to our cup. Right. So for Turkish coffee, for this method, the extraction is a little bit higher. Okay. But if you follow the, the, the rules, principles, we can finish around maybe 25, 24 extraction, uh, uh, per percent, percent extraction. Sure, sure. But without bitterness. Wow. Without too much bitterness. Great. So, yeah. Balanced cup. Yeah, yeah. That's so, excellent. So, would you say then that Turkish coffee has a higher yield of liquid to mm, bean? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Uh, but also, it's difficult to measure the extraction. Yeah, right. Uh, unlike the other extraction measuring yeah, method. Right, right. You right. have to find your method, yeah. and there is no standard. Yeah. Uh, the exact uh, time of take, uh, taking the sample is right. very important. Right, 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 right. Yeah. From the uh, cup. Right. So, Exciting. there are 10 principles I like for this. brewing this uh, method. Okay. Basically, Coffee, coffee quality. Very important. Grinding. Yep. Uh, coffee water ratio, which is our recipe. Basis of brewing. Yeah, water, uh, water quality. Sure, sure. Equipment. Yep. Our equipment. Beautiful. And agitation. Yep. How it affects to extraction. Definitely that. Heat source. There are different uh, Methods. options. And coffee cup. Yeah, I never really thought about the cup. It, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. The cup is, get, is an interesting part. And brew time. Yeah, we time. have to control for sure. uh, even extraction. And the last one is the ritual. The ritual. Yeah, yeah. it's not the scientific part, but it, it's, it's round wrap yeah. uh, right, right, right. method. I like it. So Seems like it's got all the bells and whistles of a fun time. Yeah. So the first principle is uh, coffee. Okay. Traditionally, they use very low quality coffee. So the green, the roasted coffee doesn't have any uh, good flavors, flavors to start. To yep. start. To start. Uh, we can use uh, Turkish coffee is not a 
coffee growing region right. or it's not a coffee type. Sure, sure, sure. This a is just a method. A yeah, method. Exactly. It's yep. just a, a brew method. Brew method. Like French press. Got it. So we can use any coffee. Okay. It depends your preferences. Wow. Different regions. Okay. Uh, but if you roast for Turkish coffee for a specific customer, uh, for a specific market, right. you have to be, uh, understand that. Yeah, style. understand their demand. Got it for sure. If you roast for Turkish market, for example, they expect very big body, almost no acidity. Yes, flavor is not that important right, because right, they right. add sugar. Yeah, you know, yep. also sweetness, uh, not very important. Right, they uh, all expect a nice creamy body. Okay, so it's all about body mostly. Yes, right, but right. for them. Right, but tactile. Yeah, for uh, as specialty Turkish coffee, right. I like to introduce specialty grade coffee those, uh, to those uh, clients, yeah. to those right. customers. Right, right, right. So I pay attention to not uh, introduce high acidic coffees. Okay, definitely. Or if that coffee has high acidity, I try to balance that acidity and sweetness during roasting. During roasting, yeah, for sure. Bring it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah control exactly. It. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And people, yeah, they generally they add sugar. Of course, I uh, don't recommend sh uh, sugar yeah. for their coffee because this is a specialty origin, uh, right. single origin coffee. It has a uh, natural sweetness. I try to develop sweetness yes. during the roasting. Right, right, so, right, right. Uh, this kind of uh, things we have to pay attention when we select a coffee. But uh, if you serve in a specialty coffee shop, you can serve a good quality Brazilian. Yes. And another option, a good Kenya. Yeah. A surprising, you know, it's high acidic coffee yeah. just for. Uh, for fun. Yeah, for something fun. different. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on the other hand, uh, the roasting. Okay. Generally, light roast is preferable. Really? Yes. Interesting. Uh, very few roasters in Turkey they uh, have dark roast options because uh, they prefer to roast light uh, during the grinding. The grind size should be very fine, very like fine. powder. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it reached all, almost 200, 205 degrees during the grinding. Wow. Because the burrs are very close to each other. Yes, it for sure. It heats the coffee. Right. Yeah. It yep. burns the coffee Definitely. almost. Definitely. Yeah. When they commercially grind, the grinder works hours. Right. It gets, it gets super hot. hot. hot super yep. hot. Yep, yep, yep. The coffee gets hot. And if you use a good quality specialty coffee, you lost the a good, lot of the nuance yeah, and the flavor. nuances, uh, yep. high notes, yep. Uh, yep. Are flavors. Gone. Yeah, it's they're all baked or roasted mm -hmm. still in the grinder. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they, because of that, they prefer to roast lighter. Oh, okay. But, so 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 they're planning for a little development in the grinder. E Wow, that's great. I like it. I mean, it's uh, carryover uh, cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it doesn't help to develop the flavors. <laughs> <Right. to> grind, <laughs> <right. but laughs> Maybe it, right. uh, prevent the over extraction. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Control mm -hmm. some of the bitterness. Yeah, for sure. But you can use any uh, roast profile. Got I mean, it. if you have a dark roasted coffee and you want to try it, you need to adjust your brew ratio. Okay, got it. To prevent that over extraction. Yep, yep, yep. So we can use any. Uh, Roast profile, That's nice. and of course, coffee should be fresh. Fresh, fresh. The roasted. Yes. Uh, for Turkish coffee, I was at least wait five, six days, ten days after for roasting. natural, yep. yeah, high yep. elevated for rest uh, of the roasting. Yes, bean. it needs to rest, and then. That's it. And what would you say the rest is mostly for? For the, the consistency of the brewing or the taste? For the taste. The taste. Yeah. Got it. Yep, yep, the yep. taste settled down or the degassing. De you know, it's, it's slow uh, for the nature process coffees. Yep, exactly. So, for flavor development. Yep. So the other principle is grinding. Grinding is uh, very essential for this method because uh, imagine five, six hundred years ago, they were there was no grinder. Right, mortar and pestle Manual, maybe or yeah, something. Yeah, they were using mortar and pestle. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they grind fine. It should be very oh, fine, like powder sense. fine, right, 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 because right. we don't filter the coffee. Yeah, yeah. So coffee grounds needs to settle down to the, to the bottom. If we grind coarser, like espresso grind size, yeah, 
it floats. It floats. Yeah, it right, floats. Right, right. Uh, it doesn't get a good experience. Uh, it should be very fine, but uh, when you grind finer, like powder, uh, it creates uh, 10 times uh, more particle size. Mass. And, yes, and more surface right. for extraction. Right. Right. You lost the control yeah. of extraction. Right, right, right. So there's a, ch yeah, a chart uh, from Daniel Ephraim's chart. Uh, it shows the grind size. So for French press, for example, from one coffee bean, you can grind, uh, you can create 100 and 300 particles. From one bean? Yeah, from one bean. For espresso, wow. 3,000, 3,500. Particles. particles from a bean. Yeah, for Turkish coffee, between 15 and 35,000 particles. <laughs> if you use a hand grinder, from maybe 15. Bean. Yeah. So this uh, affect your extraction. So I try to grind a little bit coarser than traditional. Turkish. Yeah, for Turkish, a little bit coarser. What's your, uh, what's your methodology on that? Uh, Why? Sorry? Why would you do that? Uh, because I try to uh, prevent it. Over extraction. Got it. Totally, exactly. Coarser grind size. Yep. Uh, for example, this is uh, between 100 and 175 microns. Uh, I aim 200, 225 microns oh, for got it. Turkish coffee. Definitely. But you have to pay attention. It shouldn't be uh, too coarse. Right, because then you Otherwise, have, the, yeah. have it floating. Yeah, exactly. So grinding uh, in the market. This coffee sounds by uh, pre ground mostly the, yep. uh, the worst uh, thing the worst thing. yeah the worst thing <laughs> you buy pre-ground coffee you open it it lost all the good flavors in 10 minutes yep, yep. and they keep this package for six months. months yeah months and months doesn't make sense yeah so I'm with you uh, we have to grind freshly right before grind order. yeah grind we order. Brew. I like it yeah in the market there are uh, commercial co coffee, uh, Turkish coffee grinders uh, and hand grinders. Uh, unfortunately, there is no uh, ho electrical home grinders for, for this, Turkish. For Turkish, right? Because it's very fine. Uh, those grinders get uh, stuck, clogged, and right, right, immediately. Right, right. Definitely. So you need to use a good hand grinder. Okay. This is a traditional hand grinder. Invented mid uh, 17th century, right? I've seen uh, them as, early 18th century. I've seen them as pepper mills, actually, something yes. like that size. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I, this is my theory. Probably uh, this invented in the region in Istanbul because the roster started to cheat. Uh, you know, it was a uh, <laughs> roasters cheat. Yes. I'm a roaster. <laughs> so they, we'll cheat once they, in a while. They, they were, th there are some stories. They yeah. were added uh, roasted chickpeas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, had that, actually that, roasted that, chickpea coffee. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah, whatever that, you want to call it. So the people were buying uh, roast, uh, ground pre-ground coffee, and they started to roast at home and grind at home. Got it. Wow. Instead of modern and pastel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. is my theory. Wow. So, uh, also, lately, there are different grinders uh, came to the market. Okay. This grinder, Commandante, it can grind fine enough for Turkish and all the other uh, oh, okay. methods. Got it. So you so, don't need a specific Turkish grinder? Uh, no. You just need yeah. one that can go, that, that has that capability yes, to go exactly. down as it, fine as a Turkish. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is, uh, can grind only for Turkish. Okay, got it. So it's one setting, closer. it yeah, only does. Setting. Got it, got it, got There's it. There's a small adjustment, right. but it cannot go. It doesn't have a huge range. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But this can grind for everything. Got it. So the other method, uh, the other principle is water. Water is water very important because 85% uh, of our beverage for Turkish, Turkish. coffee uh, is water. Okay. The bad tasting uh, water, it affects. Definitely. Uh, also, the compound of the water, uh, it helps to extract the good flavors. Right, right. Uh, there was a, uh, there are uh, water standards set by SCAA, yep. Specialty Coffee Association of America. It sh gives the uh, range for water uh, content. Content. The, the minerals and stuff? Yeah. Yes. The minerals, total dissolved solids, pH, pH sodium. Uh, yeah, sodium, Got it. everything. But uh, luckily, lately, there are a lot of uh, research for uh, coffee water. 
and there are new solutions. Okay, okay, uh, that's exciting. So the, to reach, it's difficult to find the ideal water for coffee in the market. Right, You, you right. know, regular waters, different pH, different... Uh, yeah, different city systems, uh, yeah, different chlorine, exactly. definitely a different factor. But lately, I start to use this product. This is a pre-blend uh, minerals okay. inside. Sure, sure. So uh, you need to use distilled water. Okay. For one gallon distilled water, this mixture, you add blend, it in one add packet. It. Yeah, shake it. It's ready to brew, nice. to use as a water yeah. for your coffee. It changes. It, it, because uh, the mineral content, magnesium, potassium, it helps uh, to extract the best compound of right. the coffee. Right, 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 right. So right. if you use maybe too much magnesium, water with too much magnesium, it extracts too much. Mm -hmm. But this is the ideal balance. Uh, balance. Right. Great balance. Yeah, it's a great product. Yeah. And it's simple to use. Exactly. This is for home user. Right. You can uh, set up your coffee shop or roastery with good filtration system, but right. it's right. It costs. That's a lot more of yeah. Yeah, an investment. But at mm -hmm. home, you just can or have the home. packets. Yeah. And the other thing is water quality and water temperature. Sure. In Turkey, in Greece, in Israel, in that region, uh, generally they use room temperature water. They call oh, it uh, just yeah, for the brewing. For, for, for brewing. Got it. For brewing. Got it. Uh, they just measure with their cup or their dose. They start with room temperature water, but this is not a set rule. Okay. Because in Bosnia, they call Bosnian coffee okay. for this method. Different technique. Different technique. They uh, brew, uh, sorry, they boil the coffee first, the uh, water. Okay. They boil the water first. Sure. They add uh, coffee, they stir it, they boil it again, and then they pour into the cup. Okay. This is another method. Right, right, right. Speeds why, it up a little why bit. Why they prefer this method, I don't know. Maybe they learned this method long time and ago. It's just uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it right. stays like that. And I prefer to start with uh, warm water, around 140 degrees. Okay. If you have a temperature control Right, a, uh, some kettle. kind of digital kettle or a yes. thermometer that is mm -hmm. really accurate. Exactly. It helps to control my brew time. Okay, so, so you're I, doing it for extraction time. Yeah, for Got extraction for sense. brew time. Yeah. So, because the time is mm, very important yep. for brewing for extraction. Yep. Like so it, it gives me an advantage. Yep, yeah. yep, got it. But I can start uh, with room temperature, but we ha I have to pay attention to So that. you gotta adjust your technique. Yeah. Yep, that makes sense. Exactly. So the other uh, principle is ratio, coffee water ratio, which is recipe. That's, that's uh, gonna be yeah, key. Yeah, our recipe. Yep. Uh, again, uh, for consistency, uh, we need to measure uh, with scale or any, good measuring systems, yes. not with teaspoons. Not by mass, yeah. by, not, yeah, not yeah, by weight, by yeah. got it. And when we, I give, or as a coffee professional, we give, we like to give ratio, because it's easy to Right, uh, right, right, it's not apply. about size yeah. specific, it's a ratio, exactly. yeah, that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. too, definitely. Uh, for the beginning, I recommend one to 10 ratio, this is not a set rule. Okay. You can always change the recipe, As the ratio. It. Yep. it depends to your preferences, depends to your roast profile of the coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, but one to 10 ratio is ideal point to start. Okay. If you have a new coffee, just start one to 10 ratio, one to nine or one to 11. Right. Then you adjust. You're in the range yeah. and then you yeah, just kind of feel it out. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Exactly. It's all like roasting. Mm -hmm. And Generally, we use small cups, uh, like Dumitas cup. Okay. Uh, it's between 60 and 90 milliliter capacity. Okay. So for one cup today, I'm going to use seven grams of coffee, 70 grams of water. Okay. One to 10 ratio. Got it, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah. And the other uh, the principle is equipment. Sure. Yeah, there are different Super equipments. Important. Yeah, very important. Uh, this equipment is a traditional uh, equipment uh, for brewing this method. In Turkey, we call it Jezve. 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 In the, in the other countries, they call Ibrik, sometimes Jezve or coffee pot. Coffee pot. Coffee pot is the general term, I think. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so, and also there are different options. Lately, there are Turkish coffee machines. Really? Yeah. 
There are different coffee types machine. of oh, yeah, right. Turkish coffee machines for coffee shops, for home, for office use. It has some sensor, it's stopped by itself. But I try all of them. Uh, this is like manual pour over and filter machine, mm -hmm. coffee filter machine. Mm -hmm. It's the same difference. Yep. You know, uh, you cannot control all variables with the, the machine. Automation. If yep. you know your method, you can control Every, every variable, uh, variable. and dial it yeah, in perfect. Exactly. Right. Uh, I prefer this manual method because I can control sure. uh, my brew method. Right. And it's all like the way we think about roasting too. Yeah. And different materials for this uh, equipment for coffee pot, a glass, uh, right. ceramic, stainless steel, brass, copper. Uh, very, very important, the material. Okay. Uh, copper is the popular for this equipment, but oh, there are differences. Uh, there is a chart, it shows the heat conductivity of the metals. Sure. The best heat conductive metal is silver. Interesting. The second is copper. Okay, definitely. So, but the uh, b difference between them is very small, but the price difference is huge. So why it's important, when we apply the heat from the bottom, the good quality material, copper, it uh, carries the heat immediately to every surface. So right. extraction is started Got almost it. same right. at the right, every right, surface. Right, 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 so, right, right. And to the end of our brew time, uh, we need to control the temperature, the time. So when we lower down the heat, immediately it uh, reacts. Right. It's right. cooled down. Yeah. Yeah. It's cooled down. In, for example, stainless steel is the one of the uh, worst uh, heat conductivity. You can turn it off. It's still hot. Yes, it it's holds still the energy. Hot. It, it holds the energy. It's still you have to move mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your uh, right. equipment. So, so thickness is important uh, for the uh, heat conductivity, the shape. So generally, it's wide uh, bottom, narrow rim. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Uh, so technically. What it does here, when we heat it, uh, it temperature rises. So the rim, narrow rim, creates a pressure. Interesting. Before it reaches to a boiling Got point, it. Okay, sure, sure, it sure. creates a beautiful, nice cream foam wow. at the top. Interesting. So there are some uh, coffee pots this shape. Yeah. Uh, it, doesn't, don't. it doesn't create form, wow. but if you ask me, is it a good thing, a form? Yeah. Uh, no. It's not. It doesn't give any uh, good uh, flavor. Right, 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 right. Uh, it doesn't have, or the worst thing is it holds the coffee grounds, the cream. Oh, yeah, the yeah, so it holds, it doesn't yeah. let the ground settle. Yeah. The only thing, it shows the freshness of the coffee. Right, 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 right. right. So that's, from it's crema. kind of important, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this shape and handle, uh, so this is general shape, and this is my design for one cup. Okay. Yeah, I work on the rim and the bottom, and also this, I will tell about this. Okay, right, so it's, the ratio yeah. is very specific to your mm -hmm. design. Exactly. For brewing, mm -hmm. control. For one cup, one size. Right. So agitation is the other principles. We grind very fine. We put in the cup, uh, into the pot, we add our water, mm -hmm. so the fine ground creates clumps. Yeah, yep. So it, Got it. Uh, it creates clumps, we need to saturate mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. well, we need to stir it. Stir it, but break them up. Yes, break them up, and then uh, if we stir too much, we increase the extraction. Right, over extraction. Over extraction. Right, right, right. We try to prevent, so we need to stir just maybe 10, 15 times, when it's done, it's saturated evenly. Okay. You don't need to stir over more stir. over stir. Got it, got it, got it. Actually, during the brewing, if you watch videos, you will see they stir during the brewing. Right. It increases the bitterness extraction. Yeah, and all bitterness, that. Yep. everything. Wow. Okay. I don't stir during brewing. Maybe if you see some uh, floating uh, clumps, you can push it gently. Yeah, kind of knock it yeah. down yeah. or move it around. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. That makes sense. Get it Helps. saturated so it yeah. falls. Yeah. Yep. And also, 
you know, uh, this is from Scott Rao's book this extraction, we start our brew, we start to extract the coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when the time goes, extraction rises. Mm -hmm. So Got for if we stir during the brewing, so we increase the extraction. Before we reach to the end, we pass the ideal extraction right, yet. Right, 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 right. So right. that's why we shouldn't yeah. stir too much. I like that no. graphic, it mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And also there are uh, some natural turbulence, natural agitation in the pot. Definitely. That we cannot control. There are two types of uh, degassing, chemical degassing from the coffee. Sure, definitely. Gases release yep. and they rise, it creates bubbles, rises. Foam. And yeah, it creates foam. And the other one is uh, thermal degassing. Sorry, this is here. This, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. It yeah. creates thermal degassing. Right. So it, Water creates bubbles, yep. rise up. Right. So this increases the friction, creates another agitation. Right. So yes. difficult to control right, right, this right. agitation right. in the pot. And so it makes sense to have less stirring because you have other methods mm -hmm. of agitation that are going to be concurring that you yes. have no control of. Yeah, Got exactly. It. And the other principle is heat sources. There are different uh, heat sources for this method. This is the traditional coal. Yeah. Charcoal, okay. uh, bur burn fire, yeah, campfire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put some this rocks is the, in there. Or this is the most meat. oldest right. um, heat source. Now, this one is the scent heater. There is a vessel underneath, there's a hot plate. Top uh -huh. of it, a scent. Scent? Sand. Sand. Yeah. So the hot plate heats the scent. They bury the pot oh, into yeah. the sand. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. So they, it brews. Yeah. <laughs> So it maybe you can find online yeah, on Facebook. Yeah. I definitely crazy. read some stuff yeah, about yeah. sand and I, so, I, I got confused. Uh, I experiment a lot of time with sand. I don't recommend and I don't prefer to use. <laughs> and you get sand everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the second <laughs> problem. Uh, so you have to bury the pot into the sand. Uh, the heat conductivity is very poor. Okay, sure. Uh, you sure. measure sand. one point, it's 300 degrees in 10 seconds, it goes up 400, goes right, down, right, right, right. and it's not consistent. Say it is more of an insulator. Yeah, it's wild. but people try to find the bottom, <laughs> top of the electric hot plate. Right, right, so, so you're not really using the sand. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's not consistent. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes it's f finished in three minutes, four minutes, so consistency is important, and they try to cover the pot, it creates dust everywhere. That, the dust goes so into, into, the the, cup. into the cup. That makes sense. So, uh, electrical hot plate or induction. So uh, yeah. it's difficult to control yep, all definitely. these. As a roaster, we know the gas mm -hmm. for now yep. is the best right. heat source On we can off. control. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. There's and no if you over. use a good material, yep, it right. reacts. Reacts quickly. Yeah, it reacts quickly, and then you can control your brew time. Definitely. Your roast. So that's why I prefer uh, burner, Got it. gas, flame. Okay. So these products are very uh, micro burners, powerful yep, yep. Uh, and easy to control and easy to carry. Yeah. That's why I designed these stands okay. fits to these uh, pots and micro burners. Very nice. So if you can control your brew time, you can use any uh, heat sources, no problem. Okay. But again, for consistency. Right, 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 for, right, right. Yeah. And this is the optimum for control. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And brew time is another principle. Uh, the traditionally dating longer brew time mm -hmm. creates better taste. Really? Mm, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, not because we over extract right. longer time. Yeah. Uh, and they boil it three times. Sure. The reason they use uh, already uh, not fresh coffee, stale coffee, okay, okay, pre-ground coffee, and they expect nice thick foam. Oh, so they got boil it. It, it yeah. rises. Yeah. It's not boiling right. at the boiling point, but they pour into the cup, maybe share. They put it back, boil it again, create some extra big uh, macro yeah. Uh, bubbles. Yeah, yeah. They pour it. 
and then three times. Right, right, So they right. think they create nice foam, foam by but doing unfortunately we ruin, it reaches the boiling point. Right, right, at right. The second, third time. Yeah. So it's just way over extracted. Yes. Yeah. Over extracted bitter over, coffee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You have to too much turbulence, like mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's the reason. So brew time uh, for one cup. It depends your equipment and. Two minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds okay. is ideal. Maybe it can be 145, but when you brew with the same equipment, try to uh, finish at the same time, you know. Right, right, be, Try to be consistent. Right, right, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. I like it. Is a key. Uh, also, uh, when I stop my brewing, I try to finish around 205, between 202, 206 degrees. Uh, degrees. Okay. Way be, be, uh, under, under boiling, yeah, uh, yeah, boiling right, temperature. Right, right, right. And that's the highest temperature yeah, you achieve highest. through the whole process. Exactly. Got it. And then with this pot, when I designed, this is the uh, third version. Okay. The first version was a little smaller, so it was difficult to create uh, enough foam. Okay. So when I brew for this kind of this size pot, this cup, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a enough space for foam creation. Sure. And when the foam reaches to the top, I know it's around 203, 205 got degrees it, got because it, got I'm it. experienced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Experimented. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, way. For example, this is for two cups. Sure. You can brew two cups at a time. Right. It has the same uh, material, same, but if you brew one cup for this one, right. it's difficult to control Trolled your yeah, brew yeah. time, your right. foam. Yeah, you won't have the foam. But this yeah. is great for two cups. Got it. Yeah. I was wondering, yeah, because I was looking at, yeah, your different, different sizes. Sizes, I was wondering how shapes. I didn't realize how, that it was specific to how uh -huh. it brewed. I thought it was more just about how many people you want to serve. Ah, uh, yeah. Right, you know, yeah. like two people, let's exactly. use that one, but. Uh, and yeah. also for uh, for consistency, for coffee shop use, uh, I think one pot is right. essential. Right. It right. Is like espresso. Right, you right. One time, yeah, one, one, time one for beverage, one customer. and then you yeah. start over. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Yeah. So, so what you're saying, though, is that every e-brick has a different size, and you should always brew to that size. Yes. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, another thing, there is a dimple here. Yeah, I noticed it's, that. It's like this. So this small... Uh, dimple during the brewing, it increases the turbulence. Got it for sure. Just uh, gent slightly, gently, slightly. slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it uh, helps to prevent the clumping. Got it. Yeah, definitely. So you don't need to right. stir too much. So you've created like a little internal yeah. whisk. Yes, exactly. Right. That, that that's the idea. It helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe you. <laughs> so the other principles we are. Coming to the end, the coffee cup. Oh yes. Traditionally, yes. it's small demi tasse, small size cup. Uh, it's made of uh, porcelain. You can use glass or different uh, material, Clays but it, it's something. easy to clean. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. is light, uh, light, delicate, and it doesn't give any taste yeah, to right, our right, coffee. Right, right, very clean. And unlike the espresso cup, it's generally tin. Thin. Thin. Mm -hmm. It cools a little faster, okay. which is I prefer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but too. the shape for this cup, by chance, I was practicing for competitions, and I had this cup and uh, other traditional cups. The traditional are same as espresso, narrow at the bottom, wider at the top. Okay. So narrow. or okay. Yeah, 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 or straight, like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. like cylinder and. That, those are the traditional in the market. But this one is a gift I compare with the others. I found out the coffee grounds settle down faster because the bottom is wider. Yeah, it creates right. thinner layer at the bottom. Right. The finer ground creates a mud-like texture. Yeah. So it stays, but with this shape, it stays longer and faster settle down like this. Interesting. And then when you drink right. it, right. Right. it moves. Yeah. So it holds the, uh, the ground coffee kind grounds of at the pocket. Yes. At the bottom. So this works. And this is the more modern design. Yeah, I it like helps. It. This is better. But that's why I prefer. Of course, you can use other uh, cups. Yeah, you can but use the demi toss. Yeah. Uh, that's why I can grind a little bit coarser. 
Oh. This helps me. Helps it settle and then yes. it helps it, yeah, mm -hmm. right, not come back mm -hmm. up when you tip yeah. the cup. Wow. Yeah. So the last principle, this is not scientific principle, right. but this is a traditional side of this brew method. Uh, normally, uh, we serve water, coffee, and something sweet. Uh, Turkish delight, a candy, okay. is very popular with this method. But I like our na more natural uh, sure. yeah. tastes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, date, dried date is beautiful, it's yeah. great. And also I do uh, pairings, sweet and coffee pairings. Right, 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 uh, right. Every good specialty chocolate and, right. you know, I try to pair the flavors of the coffee and the flavors of the uh, taste of the sweet yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, So it works. Wow, Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, but I uh, always recommend uh, first, drink water, clean your palate, clean your palate, and then get your coffee. Drink your, taste okay. your coffee, and then you Have deserve a the sweet. Bite of the sweet. Yeah. If you don't warn your client or guest, right. uh, they start with sweet. Yeah. And they and ruin the yeah, taste yeah, yeah, of the yeah, coffee. Definitely. Yep. 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 For sure. So this is the way you can serve water, sparkling water, anything. Okay. And and you serve your and. The end of the brewing, it's around 200, 205 degrees. When we pour into the cup, it's still too hot to drink. It's probably around 200 degrees. Definitely. Uh, there are two things. We need to wait before we start to drink uh, because coffee grounds needs to settle, settle. down. Settle. And the second is uh, the temperature. It's too hot. Too hot. Uh, ideally, I start around 170 degrees. To, to, to taste? Yeah, okay, to taste. 160, 150 is ideal. Right, right. But it takes time. Right. So I recommend three, four minutes before of rest. you start. Of rest. Got it. But this increase the extraction. Yeah, right. Because coffee grounds inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it doesn't increase that much. Okay. So uh, I have another technique. I keep my cups and I recommend it, the coffee shops to keep them in the refrigerator. I was going to say cold. I, I was yes. almost going to go there, but I was like, maybe yeah. not. Yeah. The refrigerator, because yeah. when you pour into cold cup, it cools down at Quicker. least eight, 10 degrees right. immediately. Right, right, it right. slow down the post extraction. Sure, sure. And you need less waiting time. Right, right. And, and probably even draws the grounds down a little quicker yes. too. Yeah, wow. it helps. Yeah, definitely. I like Unlike that too. Unlike the espresso cups. Are hot, so the yeah, hot, yeah, yeah, warm. definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, this is very, it's very culinary arts. It just it's, it's like a, it's 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 a very complete process. Mm -hmm. I really like that. And of course, uh, if you have a companion, a friend, it's always right, uh, right, right. Be better. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this is the uh, principles. If you follow this, if you can follow these variables, yeah, uh, you can control. If you can control uh, individually, you can create pleasant tasting coffee experience. Right, right. and so. I, I think experience is, is, the, is mm -hmm. I mean, the taste is obviously yeah. key. If it doesn't yeah. taste well, and, uh, it's not going to be a, a replica. It's something you're not going to want to do again. Mm -hmm. But this experience is amazing. And mm -hmm. then when you have this amazing beverage at the end of it, or this culinary experience, yeah. I imagine it just, it just reinforces this whole process. Mm -hmm. And also, as the other brew methods, we can evaluate this coffee. OK, OK, I get you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there are two Evaluation for this method, visual evalu evaluation yeah. uh, and service evaluation. The crema on top, mm -hmm. everybody expect nice, firm, uh, nice, yeah. good crema and the drinking temperature. And the other, same as the other brew methods, right. evaluation. Regular coffee uh, evaluation. Good, uh, yeah, good aroma, good flavor, a good sweetness. Right. It should be balanced, balanced good flavors, creamy, uh, yeah, sweetness, sweet. and, yeah. And overall, it should be a pleasant experience, coffee tasting experience. Okay, yeah. And it doesn't difficult to apply to coffee shops uh, because now we have commercial grinders. Right, uh, right, right, you know, right. They can grind uh, quicker. quicker. And then with this setup, not uh, too long brew uh, mm -hmm. time, uh, in three minutes, you can brew two, three cups right, right, to your right, customers right, right. as uh, like manual pour over. Right, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. it's wild. Mm -hmm. I, I think this process is amazing for that, for 
it, it makes you kind of respect this, the, 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 the coffee and the whole process a lot. Mm -hmm. Even though it does seem quicker, like I said, two or three minutes, that's yeah. kind of shocking. But uh, this, the process, I think, builds this, I don't know, this expectation, but also you, you, you realize how special this, this is. Like coffee is a special thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we take it for granted. Yeah. And I like this process because it kind of reinforces the specialness of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And it has tons of stories. Yeah. First, the technique, <laughs> like the quality, right, right, and then right. behind that, it's tons of stories. Uh, you can share with people, your client, customers. And other thing I forgot to say, uh, this is similar as professional cupping technique. Right. So the taste is changing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's create, that gives another advantage to this brew method. At the first sip, you get different flavors, and when it cools down, it gets more balance, mm -hmm. acidity and sweetness yeah. gets together, right, and right, right. that uh, mouth fill, right. if you use, and if you can brew a pleasant uh, cup, uh, the, the body, because of the coffee grounds inside, the body and mouth fill is always creamy, yeah. and the aftertaste it stays longer, mm -hmm. it's very long, way mm -hmm. longer than espresso. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. I've always yeah. wondered what the ultimate brew method would be for cuppers. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of shocking that this is pretty yeah. much perfect. And it's like, I'm really shocked that there's not a, like a subgroup of cuppers that just are really <laughs> deep into this process, right? Because it's like perfect. Yeah. Wow. So now we can do a demonstration. Okay. And there are some uh, small techniques. We have to pay attention, the time, uh, everything. I'm going to brew. A natural process Ethiopian. Okay, excellent. Uh, I roasted nine days ago. Nine days ago? Yeah, nine days ago. It rested. What do I say? If you can see, this is not light roast, not very, very dark roast. Mm -hmm. But I tried to develop the potential of this coffee's sweetness. characteristic. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep. sweetness, and also I tried to balance that acidity. Yep, bring down the acidity yeah. a little bit, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more mm -hmm. bodied. A lot of sweetness. Yeah. I'm gonna measure seven grams. Do you have a favorite coffee that you like to do brew Turkish? Or is uh, it just kind of whatever you're, whatever's fresh you know, and uh, nice then? Actually, Ethiopian. Yeah. As a roaster, okay, we sure. always yeah. like it because it's, <laughs> it's, it's pleasant, balanced, right, right, everything. Right. It's complex, it's yeah, delicate, complex. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's all things beautiful. Yeah. But I like to introduce different regions. Right. Uh, my competition coffee five, five years ago, it was a Sulawesi wash Ooh, process. Interesting. Yeah, the Snake it Island. Was, yeah, it was a great coffee. Wash it process was a process, Sulawesi. Su wash process Sulawesi interesting. with amazing creamy body. Wow. More than uh, Ethiopians. Right, because, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, that coffee has high lipid compa uh, compounds. Sure. Lipi lipid. Because the varietals fat. that they grow in Sulawesi. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it creates amazing uh, creamy, uh, round mouth and body. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, it has nice citrus acidity, unlike the other uh, you know, Indonesian Indonesians, coffees. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, it was a nice mild acidity in the cup, some good herbal, uh, right. notes, right. Right. some yeah. spicy notes, but with that acidity and sweetness, it was a great competition coffee. Can you imagine that? Right. Uh, yeah. And very complex and different. Yes. You're probably yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it's always nice to kind of be more noticeable yeah. that way. Last year, I found out uh, coffee from Myanmar. Myanmar? Yes. Wow, it really? It was crazy good for this method. Really? Because it's a natural process, but it was easy to roast, unlike the regular natural processed coffees, and that coffee has nice fruity notes, really? amazing body, a bitterness, but black pepper, spicy bitterness. Oh, I get you. That unpleasant yeah, one. Yeah, right, right, right. You right. know, when you ch chili chocolate kind of yeah, yeah, feeling. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. That kind of feel. Wow. It was surprising. For a while, I roasted that coffee. Wow. Okay, good Brazilians. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So. Oh, that's exciting. Okay. So now... <laughs> And this Ethiopian is uh, a good coffee to introduce the regular Turkish coffee drinkers. Perfect. Yeah. Got ya. A good quality uh, Brazilian. Right, right. You now with fruity notes. Yeah. Uh, and this well developed coffee. So I measured seven grams of coffee. I'm going to grind. Okay. That seems like not too big of a chore. No. Yeah. 
Sometimes it the hand grinding can take a bit. Yeah, two minutes, three minutes. Also. How did you find the Miramar coffee? Uh, do, do you know Andrew Hatzel? Oh, yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't know him very so well, but that, yeah, he's big in the industry. That was one of his projects. Oh, he okay, went okay. to Myanmar four or five years ago wow. for a project. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, for uh, educated farmers. Oh. So I think two years ago, uh, it became to specialty grade. Excellent. So I found from a small coffee importer. Okay, okay. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's interesting. But I'm not sure. I couldn't find this year. Right. There are right, a lot right, of things right. going yeah. on. <laughs> Yep, the world is a volatile place. Yes. Oh, I didn't even realize that was a little jar down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to adjust. I like it. It's a little tough, yeah. If you pull Got it. Got it right there. Yeah. Yep. You pull it or uh -huh. you just pop it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I get you. Just the bottom. Right, so it's just a little. You yep. can, yeah, uh, hold this handle and put inside of here if you. Oh, right, to hide it? it? Yeah. To make it more transportable? Mm -hmm. Got it. With commercial grinder, it takes four seconds. Yes, yeah. seconds. right, right, definitely. So you're born in Turkey? Yes. Where in Turkey? Istanbul. In Istanbul? Uh, actually, I was born in France, grew up in. Turkey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was five. We moved. My family moved yeah. to Turkey. I was born in California, but I moved, when I was five, they moved me back to Minnesota. So I'm a Minnesotan, but I guess I'm kind of a Californian too. So I understand that. Now New Orleans is home. New Orleans. Yeah. It's, a, it's a nice place. Yeah, we were just down there. In February, for for Were regionals, for uh, regionals. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was there, but yeah, mm -hmm. it was a good event. Yeah, it was. Event. It was a good weekend, and the timing was great too. So we got to watch some parades. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a crazy time. Yeah, it was fun. At the beginning, we thought it's not a good time because they close the uh, streets. All the streets, it's, people yeah, were getting it's lost. Difficult to to get there. <laughs> to yep. get there, definitely. Which I guess that's part of competition. <laughs> Making it more challenging. In 2021 uh, Expo will be in New Orleans. The big coffee oh, sky expo. Really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Great. I think next year Boston? Well Boston, then Portland and okay. then New Orleans. Okay. Nice. Yeah. April in New Orleans. So I'm going to put the coffee, ground coffee, freshly ground coffee, into the pot. Uh, there are two ways. You can, sometimes they put water first, then coffee. But I prefer first coffee, then okay. water. Okay. Because if you put the coffee after water, it creates more clumps. Got it. Totally. So, I totally understand yeah. that. Yep, yep, yep. Any, yeah, mm -hmm. for us Midwesterners that try and thicken our gravy with flour and water. You understand that. <laughs> I think it's now. On. I just turned it was off, but I just turned it on. Okay. Now it's 140. That's right. I think it turned yeah. itself off. For 140 degrees. I'm going to pour 70 grams of Got it. water. But when I pour it, you're gonna do I a little swear, bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Swear, try to Max Use a little bit of a, right? yeah, a little agitation from mm -hmm. the, the pour. It makes mm -hmm. sense. And then, so the inside of the pot is silver plated. Okay. So Got you it. cannot use a plain copper. It should be plated the inside. Right. There are two options: tin or uh, silver plated. Okay. Okay. So to protect the, that uh, material. That's why you have to have the wood spoon. Yeah, that wood makes a lot spoon. of sense. I was wondering so, if it was mm -hmm. a taste thing or if it was actually got it so, materials thing. Yeah. Uh, That's olive wood, maybe. Yeah, this is olive wood. It's beautiful. So, yeah. so ten times maximum, fifteen times. Is ten times of yeah. stir. Okay, yeah. I got it. And 
I start with high flame. I start my this is timer. Like a so I start with high flame. So it heats the... Yeah, I already uh, see it. Yeah. I already see it heating. Mm -hmm. Heat the copper. Probably now it's equal every... Right, right, right. It's surface. already it's already equalized. Mm -hmm. So through the uh, mid of the brew time, around one minute, okay. I'm going to lower the, down the... Temperature. Heat, uh, temperature. So also we will see the foam creation. Got it, got it. Because we had it too high, it would boil mm -hmm. and then it would break it all up. So we want to like get exactly. it going and then just lower it down. This is got like uh, our roasting profile. I was just going to say, is that yes. you hit it high with heat and then you got to uh -huh. figure out a way to bring it down to have control. Yeah, if we cannot control the heat right before friend, uh, first crack, we mess <laughs> up. <laughs> so we, we can <laughs> mess the, that point. Yeah. Definitely. I and mean, this is a weird, like yeah. it's a mixing of like cupping and uh -huh. like aluminum cooking and roasting. There's like all things going on here. I love it. I know what I'm doing tonight. Oh, I have class tomorrow. Sun, Saturday night. So it's minute one. So it covered the top. Well, you totally had the feel for it. Cause I didn't even know the burner was still on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can, yeah. Okay, I get you for sure. This is, I'm gonna. This is reminding me too of making a, oh, like a pastry cream. How you gotta heat it up, but if you uh -huh. boil it, it boil breaks. It, it, it see what I mean? Breaks. So you just got you're like constantly like stirring it and watching it and like trying to get it to that perfect, yeah. Exactly. If you go faster, uh, the temperature rises and it's difficult to control the end temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Raise off right. Oh, well, now it's like a little uh, volcano in there. So this is very important. The uh, material of the uh, pot. Yeah, I'd so say it reacts immediately. So. It's so reactive. This is, yeah, I'm really shocked at actually how it's reactive it is. Almost two minutes. So I hold the cup with an angle, just slowly. I turn it off. And it's ready to serve again. I need to remind my guests or client, right. it's too hot to drink, but please evaluate the aromatics first. Mm -hmm. And then after two or three minutes, it's ready to drink. Enjoy. That's beautiful. So another extra tip. I said uh, the coffee uh, foam at the top, it holds coffee grounds. Yes. Uh, even it cools down, there are some coffee gr grounds, yeah. particles. If you, want, if you don't want to get those particles, you, you get can one more agitation? Uh, not even the agitation, just oh, push little, it right, just right. a little bit, it crack. It's a, it's a little bit like the, yeah, like yeah, the brick. Break the yeah, crust. Yeah, back into cupping. Yeah, br break the crust. Right. And it opens and also it starts to uh, settle down faster. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It'll draw down the extra, yeah. the, the raft to what it, we call it in, mm -hmm. in the consomme. If you don't have a spoon, I just blew. Oh, really? Opens. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. gentle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It opens and you start with clean uh, sip. Got it, got it. Because you don't want to sip that, that mm -hmm. little rafty because it'll have yeah. sediment in it and yeah. probably some bitterness from the foam. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, also, you shouldn't finish the bottom. Yeah, till the bottom. The coffee grounds is settled you down. You want it all to yeah. the bottom before mm -hmm. you actually really drink it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, maybe five, six sips is ideal. Right, and right. Then, yeah. Don't wait too long because the extraction is continue, sure, not sure, more sure. than maybe eight minutes, yeah. 10 minutes. Right, 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 right. I get you. You don't want it to be over extracted because then it's going to be right. bitter, but it's also going to lose some of its like nuance mm -hmm. and the delicate notes yeah. that you'll get the out flavor, of it. The flavor, good, yep, yep, yep. Uh, high notes. Yep, flavors. the reason why you got mm -hmm. the Ethiopian and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was shocked at how much aroma came off of the grind even. So you, that was, that's a nice Ethiopian, mm -hmm. well roasted. Yeah. So it's, yeah, more like a medium roast, I'd say. Something light uh, medium? This is not light medium. This is little CD plus. Okay, okay, Yeah, okay, I try okay. to, yeah. Get more development. Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. More de development. Yeah. Probably this was, this has 22% development, development time. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. excellent. How long mm -hmm. overall roast time? Do you uh, mind just saying? With one kilogram roaster, it was probably around 12 minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah. right, right, an ideal. Mm -hmm. Nice job. It's still hot. But yeah. You can enjoy. Is it time? And yeah. Um, no, it's not time. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it depends your palate, your preference. Uh, well, I've yeah. cupped enough to where I could uh, theoretically, okay. you, you, I can drink hot coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you can feel from the outside. Yeah, but definitely feel yeah, the cup. I, I think it's still hot. Again, it keeps hot. 
for quite uh, a while yeah. because it's quite got a, yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of residual mm -hmm. energy just in that. And the grounds too, that's kind of an insulator, yeah. I want to say. Hey. Yep. You're right. You're right. So this is a specialty side of this brew method. Wow. Yeah, I'll try to introduce this old method to a right. new wave. I'm going I'm to attempt to spread this method myself now. This is, this is uh, great. I love it. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna bring a little of this action to the Roasters Guild and just try and get some other people in. I, I, I'm actually shocked that this isn't like, I mean, even myself, like when Steve first talked to me about mm -hmm. this process and you and that, mm -hmm. I was kind of a little bit like, Turkish coffee? Like, I don't know. I mean, we have some Turkish restaurants here, but it's yeah, yeah. really dark, it's stale, it's over-extracted. It doesn't seem specialty, you know what I mean? Yes. It, it, and Unfortunately, that experience yeah. creates a bias. Yeah, but, right, yeah, a bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we just yeah. need to break that bias down. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, there's so much, crossover from this process to cooking, mm -hmm. to cupping, to mm -hmm. roasting. It's, roasting. It's, it's, for me, it's, it's my new favorite method. Yep, yep, yeah, you guys wanna come try? Anyone, anyone gonna step up? I think Joe should come on, yeah. Yeah, come on, yeah. Man. come on in. <laughs> and maybe you wanna use, you wanna yeah. Very aromatic. Right? Yeah. It is still very hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to put you on the spot too much there. Mm. You know, after four minutes, five minutes, mm -hmm. it's getting more clear, clean cup, like filtered yeah, clean. You, yeah, you would think that it would be really muddy, but it's clean. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Delicious, thank you. My pleasure. It's so nicely fruity too. Like I, I just, yeah, I love the, I love Ethios though, so this is like right yeah. up my alley. But it's also, it, it's nice citrus. Like yeah, I was just, you, it's, you, it's, you, just, you, a, it's just really nice citrus in this coffee, in this cup. Wow, that's amazing. All right. I hope you enjoy. Oh, it was great, Thurgay, yeah, for sure. Thank great. you so much.